Hello again, everyone. I'm Dr. George Simon, and welcome to another edition of the new Character Matters program. This is the program where we talk about what I consider to be the defining issue of our time, the character crisis that we face and that we have faced for several decades now and that affects every aspect of our lives, from our intimate relationships to our community affairs, to our international and political affairs, every aspect of our lives is affected by the character issue. And it's been my belief for some time now that most of our social ills can never be fully solved until we tackle the issue head on. It's the proverbial first step before we can even begin to make a dent in some of the problems that we have, we have to reckon with what the problem is. We have never been perfect. It's human nature not to be. But we used to spend a lot more time and devote a lot more attention and energy to the character formation of our children and to our own personal development. Life is a journey and certain principles are essentials for the journey. That's why I titled my most recent book about the Ten Commandments of Character, as I call them, Essentials for the Journey. Because embracing these proven principles for developing and instilling character, taking matters to heart, is what will help pave the way for a much more productive, creative, satisfying, and fulfilling life for all of us. Today, I want to talk about the importance of honesty to the entire equation. In many ways, the fourth commandment that I talk about in my book, and that I first introduced in my book, Character Disturbance, the fourth commandment having to do with honesty. In many ways, it's pivotal to solid character formation. There are so many ways in which all of us struggle with honesty. You see, to face the truth many times is perhaps one of the most difficult things to do. And we are essentially creatures of economy. We try to minimize unpleasant labor and to maximize the things that please us. So when it comes to doing the truly hard work of facing and reckoning with the truth, it's much easier most of the time to deceive. Now, most of us who are relatively decent characters are self-deceivers. Why? Because to one degree or another, we default on our own principles many times. We want to be good and noble folks and also to be true to our values, but that's hard. And so, so many times, relatively unwittingly, sometimes completely unconsciously, we deceive ourselves. It happens all the time. I can't tell you how many times I've consulted with individuals who told me about what they realize at some later time was the primary motivation that they had for entering a relationship. A person might tell me, for example, that they saw all of their friends getting married and they were feeling kind of alone and wondering if they would ever um, have a relationship, uh, the kind of relationship that would last. So even though they had pretty significant doubts about the person that they were getting involved with, they allowed themselves to fool themselves. They told themselves that they weren't just getting together out of fear of loneliness. Maybe they even convinced themselves that despite their concerns about certain aspects of a person's character, 
that both time and enough love and nurturing would make things better. You see, it would have been harder in that case to wait, to deny, to do the serious searching that would have taken to perhaps vet other potential relationships. Time resting in the balance and passing all the time and perhaps even stoking the fear even further that you might be living life uh, more alone and for a longer period of time than you planned on. So most of us in one way or another deceive ourselves about our true motives. And sometimes because we do that so routinely and automatically and fairly unconsciously, we get used to it. We get used to getting out of touch with ourselves and what's really going on with us. And there's always a price to be paid for that. Now, there are those among us who are not primarily self-deceivers. They're primarily deceivers of others. These are folks who are not really oblivious to their motivations. They know their motivations well. I call these individuals disturbed characters. And there's a spectrum of them. Various types of disturbed characters and very varying degrees of severity of character disturbance. But as I say in my workshops, these folks are very aware, so they know what's going on, they know what they're doing. The problem is not awareness. The problem is that they are aware but don't care sufficiently about the impact of their behavior on others. They're only concerned with themselves and with their individual wants and needs. And wants, once again, are very separate from needs. Many times, the things that we want are the last things we truly need. But these folks go after what they want with abandon. And sometimes they use trickery. Sometimes their true agendas are cloaked behind a veil of civility or behind any number of false presentations. In severe cases, like an example of, uh, say, a Bernie Madoff, who was so charming and so convincing of folks with pensions, adequate pensions, that he was only looking out for their welfare when he knew all along that his sole purpose was to enrich himself and very quickly and to amass immense power and clout and to um, basically take advantage of even people who he knew to be the most vulnerable. Such folks lack heart. They lack the ability to care. They lack sufficient empathy. Either they were wired in such a way that it couldn't even be nurtured very well, or things happen to callous their hearts. In any case, there are many reasons for this, unlike what you will hear. That's another example of dishonesty. So many folks are experts these days, and there's a lot of information out there. Unfortunately, a lot of it is pompous, uh, grandiose, inadequate, insufficient, partial information, mostly designed to lend credibility to and afford status to the folks promoting the notions. But in any case, there are individuals who in their lack of concern for others and their steadfast determination to profit themselves who will say or do anything because they serve no higher power than their own 
selfish wants or needs. And truth is the ultimate higher power. Reckoning with it, being square with oneself, being square with others, subjects a person to disappointment, rejection, failure, especially failure to achieve immediate wants and goals. But it's always instructive, and in the end, it always triumphs. Which is why, uh, as the saying goes from the famous Aesop fable, it's the best policy, honesty. And that's true for ourselves as well. It's not just to everyone's benefit when we're square with each other. It's to our benefit when we're square with ourselves, when we know ourselves, when we know our hearts, when we do the hard work of introspection, reckon honestly with what drives us, what motivates us, why we're doing what we're doing. When I was being trained as a psychologist and a therapist, I was advised never to ask why questions. It would inherently put a person up with whom I was trying to establish a relationship on the defensive, I was told. And then they would not open up. But I've come to appreciate over the years as I have studied the phenomenon of our time and how everyone to one degree or another and in one way or another is struggling with character issues, I have found the extraordinary value in gently, lovingly, but firmly holding folks to account and asking them to examine their motives because there's power there once you know what you're really doing and why you're doing it everything changes and it also helps give you a clearer perspective of the manipulators in your life once you're more familiar with all the machinations that a person can go through all the uh, deceptive uh, behaviors that a person can exhibit, you're a little bit more likely, actually a lot more likely, to detect the manipulative machinations of someone who has less than noble intent in their interactions with you. We are all to one degree or another struggling struggling with character issues and honesty is the key and there are ways there are ways to spot deception i talk about several of them in my book in sheep's clothing as i examine the most frequent tactics that folks use to impression manage others and to manipulate for personal gain. Most of these uh, tactics that I outline in the book are just subtle ways of lying, subtle ways of presenting oneself one way while actually intending something else entirely. And I've had the great fortune of having many folks either write me or call me, or even in person tell me that just coming to recognize those tactics and coming to recognize what the person that they were involved with was really like in character changed everything for them, put them on a whole new path of personal empowerment and growth. And that's exactly why I do this work. And that's why I do these broadcasts too, these podcasts. 
and why I'll continue to do them, and why I hope you will avail yourself of the many articles at drgeorgesimon.com. You can see the URL at the top of the screen here. And to avail yourself of my books in Sheep's Clothing, Character Disturbance, The Judas Syndrome, How Did We End Up Here? And my latest offering, which I sincerely hope gets the reviews necessary and the exposure necessary through word of mouth to make the same inroads as my other work. Character development is the most pressing issue of our time. We have many, many social problems and ills. And to face them successfully and even begin to resolve them, we have to be able to engage in a truly loving discourse. And that requires a level of honesty that most of us are not used to. Most folks come to the table with their minds already made up in their egoic self-satisfaction and pride and vanity, already knowing that their perspective is the right perspective, and that if the other side would just agree, everything would be fine. We can't do business as usual anymore. We have to come to the table with humility and with integrity and with a level of honesty that most of us are not familiar with. We have to be honest with ourselves about what we're really seeking, and we have to be honest with each other. And we have to combine that honesty with genuine care. That's the secret. That's what will get us to the next level. Ultimately, therefore, you can see that Character is largely about learning to really love. There are so many things that masquerade as love, unfortunately, that we get deceived even about that. But the task of life is really to learn what it's all about, and it's the only thing capable of saving us. But to have a genuine chance of succeeding at this task, we have to have the capacity for honesty. We have to get firmly, but lovingly, honest with ourselves to grow in character. We have to know ourselves, our fears, our insecurities, our wants, our needs. We have to honestly reckon with our failures with our defaults on our own principles. And more than honestly self-reckon, we have to commit ourselves to the truly hard work that it takes to do better and to be better. That honest, firm, courageous confrontation whether it's with ourselves or with others, is the key to character. If there's anything that my experience, both professionally and personally, has taught me, is that when we dare to be fully truthful, growth is the result, or at least the potential for growth is the result. And it's also what genuine love necessarily entails, including the courage to honestly, but benignly, to caringly and lovingly confront and call to correction the erroneous ways of thinking and behaving of individuals disturbed in character. Now, admittedly, there are those among us who are so significantly impaired in character that that task is not only most daunting, but 
in many cases virtually impossible. That's why it's so important to understand the essential characteristics of good character. What makes a person a truly decent person? More importantly, how to properly vet someone's character. How to do your homework, as it were. What signs to look for. Admittedly, some folks are very good at keeping themselves hidden, but there are nonetheless some core characteristics that we should all be familiar with and expect of one another. And that's also why, as I mentioned in a prior podcast, that we should never, ever entertain serious relationships with individuals where the red flags are all over the place for serious deficiencies of character. And we should also never, ever afford the reins of power to anyone showing the signs of severe character disturbance. There was a time in our history, as I mentioned in a prior podcast, where folks that we presently call psychopathic or sociopathic actually had a place. They're too dangerous in our world today. They can no longer be entrusted with the reins of power. They inevitably destroy as opposed to build. They inevitably serve their own interests for power and control and especially dominance. And they, they literally leave bodies in their wake. So no matter how much we think they might serve our agenda politically, it's folly to afford such individuals the reins of power. So true, there are those individuals for whom even the most delicate, direct confrontation is likely to do no good because they are too entrenched in their sociopathic ways and they're too devoid of empathy to have any motivation to change. Nonetheless, nonetheless, we are called to honestly reckon. It's the only thing that can help save us all. And so we'll keep talking about these things. And I hope you tune in for another edition of the New Character Matters. Thanks for tuning in this time. I'm Dr. George Simon. See you next time. Take care.